Winding across middle Georgia, the Okmulgee River is the westernmost tributary of the Altamaha River. Coming up, we'll follow a group of adventurous kayakers and canoeists as they participate in Paddle Georgia, a week-long trip down the river. We'll also take a closer look at some ecological treasures of the region. Funding for Georgia Outdoors has been made possible by a grant from Mary Hall Singleton and by the Imlay Foundation. From its headwaters in North Georgia to its intersection with the Okoe, forming the mighty Altamaha, the Okmulgee River cuts across 241 miles of diverse terrain. Along the way, the Okmulgee and its tributaries drain more than 6,000 square miles across 33 Georgia counties. This is the Okmulgee watershed. The best way to experience the river is by paddle. Every year, the Georgia River Network sponsors Paddle Georgia, an event which draws hundreds of paddling enthusiasts from all skill levels to take on a river. In 2007, they chose the Okmulgee, and we tagged along to experience the river with them. We started Paddle Georgia because we really wanted to get people all across the state of Georgia out on Georgia's river so that they can understand how important they are to our lives, how beautiful they are. And our hope from doing that is that it'll raise awareness you know, throughout the communities that we paddle through and also engage the people who are on the trip to go back home after the trip and get involved in protecting a river or stream in their own community in their hometown. After tackling the iconic Chattahoochee River and the Etowah in North Georgia, the Georgia River Network was looking for something a little different in its third year. The Okmulgee seemed a natural fit. Well, you know, compared to the other two trips that we've done so far with Paddle Georgia, the Chattahoochee and the Etowah, it's so much more diverse because you start in the Piedmont where you've got shoals and rocks and rapids and scenery that you would see in the North Georgia mountains, really. And then you drop below the, below the fall line and you get down in the coastal plain, you have this winding, meandering river Lots of beautiful sandbars, cypress trees, Spanish moss, tupelo trees. This trip, people have seen how a river changes as it goes through the different geographic regions of Georgia. Primarily, we wanted to bring attention to the Okmulgee. I mean, you hear a lot about the Chattahoochee because um, it's Atlanta's primary river, but when you look at the Okmulgee, Okmulgee gets about 85 million gallons a day of Atlanta's treated wastewater. The Okmulgee is impacted uh, Metro Atlanta is a very important river for the state, part of the Altamaha Basin, the biggest river basin in the state. It's a very important river and we just want to bring attention to it. Participants in Paddle Georgia bring camping gear and are hosted at a different campsite every night. Each morning begins with shuttles leaving the campsite just after dawn. Usually people start waking up around 6 a.m. every morning. We have catered breakfast. Um, we also have coffee that's provided by Cafe Campesino out of um, Americas, Georgia. And then we have shuttles that run folks to the river between around 7 to 9 every morning. People get on the river, have all day to paddle. Yeah, Curtis Holland. All right, Curtis, have a good day. I'm going to get on with Jim and Curtis here. Awesome. Yeah, does everybody have their buddy boats? Make sure you have a boat that you're going to paddle with, okay? We have all kinds of people that come on Paddle Georgia. We have families, we have fathers and sons, mothers and daughters, old friends. We have every age group. Well, this is my third year of doing it. I live right on Lake Lanier across the street, basically from the Chattahoochee River. So it's really important to me, water quality. And so I came the first year and we've come every year and it's been wonderful. I have friends I met here that have been lifelong friends now. So it's, it's a great experience. Uh, the first year, of course, is down the Chattahoochee, and I uh, read an article about it. So I thought, you know, I'd like to spend a week floating down the Chattahoochee. You know, I think it's just a good way to uh, explore explore Georgia, you know, and see, see a side of the, the, the land that you don't get to see from a car. The upper part of the Okmulgee challenges paddlers with a rocky course of shoals and rapids. Yeah, I think that's a surprise to a lot of people when they think of central Georgia 
they don't think of rapids. You know, you th we're usually thinking about North Georgia rivers as having the rapids and the shoals. But along the fall line, which stretches from Columbus all the way over to Augusta, where the rivers drop off the Piedmont and the coastal plain, you've got some fairly serious rapids. And that makes it fun, you know, it's fun to go through the rapids. Nothing too, too serious, but enough to get your heart pumping and make it a little fun. It's beautiful. I've seen a, a, a lot of sights. My favorite part is just the rapids, because, no, it's just fun. It's fun anyway, it's, it's a rush, uh, you know, knowing that you might flip over or not. We really are concerned about the safety of the participants on Paddle Georgia, so we work with the Georgia Canoeing Association, who bring um, people from their organization who are trained in whitewater safety and river safety. We then station those folks in those areas that we know will be um, areas that will be a little bit more difficult and challenging for people so that they'll be there to give people a hand whenever they, they face those challenges on the river. Well, there's a, you know, a lot of little shoals and things like that to go through, and then they had a, actually a, a, quite a big drop, a little waterfall, and we couldn't do it. We had to portage around it through a little island. We had to do two portages this year. Um, on the first day, we had to portage around a rather large rapid that was too unsafe for people to actually paddle through. So we arranged for a portage site for those folks. And then on the second day, there's a dam in Juliet, Georgia, and we had to arrange for a portage on that day as well so that we could shuttle the people and their boats around the dam and they could put in safely down below the dam. You know, that's part of the fun. It's the adventure and the challenge. And so, you know, everybody kicks in. Uh, everybody helps with loading and unloading. Everybody has a thing to do. It's a great trip. I'd recommend to anybody that this likes the river. Because everybody's experiencing the same thing, going through the same trials and tribulations, by the end of the week, you have a community, and that's kind of a rare thing in today's society. It's a neat thing to see. At the end of each day, the exhausted paddlers load up their canoes and are shuttled back to the campsite to recoup for the next day's stretch. People take on the challenge for a variety of reasons. We did it last year. We were from Rome, and it was going to our hometown, so we enjoyed it. So we thought we'd do it again. Just being together and for me it's getting away from work and this trip has been interesting because we've seen different, uh, the terrain has changed so much from the Piedmont to here. We're, we're from North Georgia so this is all different to us. Um, I canoed in my youth, um, belong to a canoe trails organization in Pennsylvania and um, did this in Canada. So I got an email from my Georgia friend who uh, said would you like to spend a nostalgic week in a canoe? And I thought that sounded really fun, so here we are. See you down river. Well, we got a grant from an outside nonprofit organization, and they gave it to us to take some um, kids from Atlanta inner city schools out on the river and get them outdoors. It's a whole Get Kids Outdoors program. So this is our first year. We are having a blast. Paddling on the river, it teaches you a lot about yourself, and you learn and you, and you mature as you um, go down the river. And you can actually learn a lot of life lessons that you can, that help you better yourself. I've never really paddled before at all. It's pretty cool. I like it. It's tiring, but once you get to it, you get to the end, you're, you're accomplished. You feel proud of yourself because you did something that's, that you've never done before. Being from Atlanta, which is a giant metropolitan area, and so we really don't have this exposure to this nature. I was just relieved of all the stresses of where I'm from. Paddle Georgia is more than just a fun trip down one of Georgia's most scenic rivers. It's also an education on river ecology and the importance of keeping our rivers clean throughout the state. One of the main reasons that I wanted to organize something like this is normally when you go out on a paddle trip, you go out for a day and you will pick the prettiest section of whatever river it is that you want to paddle. But when you do a week-long trip, you not only see the really beautiful sections of river, you see kind of the uglier sections of river. You get to see the wastewater discharges. Uh, you get to see the riverfront development. Uh, you get to see all manner of abuses that we inflict upon our rivers. We're all taking a piece of this back home to our watersheds, and so we hope at Adopt the Stream, You'll take it back to your watershed and adopt the site. <laughs>
To help educate participants, the organizers of Paddle Georgia enlist volunteers from Georgia's Adopt a Stream program to do water quality testing along the way. Be on the river. This is the best workshop that you can do because everything's right there in front of you. Adopt a Stream is a really special part of the Paddle Georgia event every summer. And what Adopt a Stream does is teach citizens how to monitor the health of their river or stream or creek in their own backyard. Our first site is going to be at mile six. So we've got a ways. So it'll probably be about Georgia Adopt a Stream is a statewide volunteer water quality and monitoring program where we train citizens how to go out and monitor their waterways. This is our second year participating in Paddle Georgia. What we've been doing this week is taking volunteers out and giving them the training in chemical monitoring. We've trained about 20 people on how to go out and monitor their streams so that they can take it back to their community when they get home. The Adopt a Stream group paddles together and will perform a number of tests at a few designated locations along the day's route. So our first monitoring site that we went to in our group was an industry outfall and that was a point source pollution discharge and that's a place that we encourage volunteers to monitor. Point, point source pollution is anything like this where we can point our finger to it. Point source pollution is regulated through Georgia EPD Environmental Protection Division and that is pollution that comes out of a pipe. And they have a sign that's posted that says that they have a permit to discharge. With non-point source pollution, that's a diffuse area of pollution. So we can't exactly point to it and say, this is the cattle field that the nutrients are coming from. This is the bridge that maybe some oil is coming from. We all drive, we all wash our clothes, we all go to the bathroom. So we're all a part of the problem. The volunteers test for a number of different factors in the water, all of which paint a picture of the overall health of the river. Get the meniscus right on the line. Well, we look, we're looking at dissolved oxygen, and what dissolved oxygen tells us is how much oxygen there is available for the fish and the macroinvertebrates, all the aquatic species living in the stream. And when you do this, you're gonna see a color change. We're also testing for uh, bacteria. With that, we've found pretty good levels of bacteria. They're very low. And we're also doing conductivity, which measures the ions that are in the, in the stream. If you have high conductivity readings, you may have an influence, like a septic system or a wastewater treatment plant. One, or zero to 1,999. So she's gonna record it on our data sheet. These tests are repeated on sites up and down the river, and the data is used to determine the overall health of the watershed. The more citizens who are educated about water resources and our, the health of our waterways, the better we're gonna be because we rely on water for every bit of our lives. There's 70,000 miles of river in Georgia. We can't be on every single one, so the volunteers are very important to our program. If anyone knows about the importance of taking care of our rivers, and the Otmulgee in particular, it's James Holland, the Altamaha River Keeper. He's the watchdog for abuses along the river and all of its tributaries. The Altamaha River watershed is made up of four different rivers. One is the Okmulgee River, and then on the other side is the Oconee River, and they come together and that makes the, the Altamaha, and then you go further down and you have the Ohupi River that also comes in. We accompanied James in his motorboat as he traveled along with the Paddle Georgia participants. Well, it's the Altamaha River Keeper. I, I do most of the field work for our organization. We look out for all sorts of sediment that comes from uh, development, pollution from sewage treatment plants, pollution from industrial waste pipe. We try to protect flow, including not only the major tributaries, but the smaller tributary creeks and intermittent streams that feed the creek. James Holland spends much of his time finding and reporting misuses of the river he so dearly loves. He takes his camera wherever he goes to document not only questionable discharges and potential pollution offenders, but also the amazing wildlife found throughout the watershed. I, I think what drives me the most is uh, there's only a very small amount of what I knew in these rivers left in these rivers. And I believe that the, my biggest driving factor 
is that I would like to, we may not be able to reverse this, but we need to bring it to a stop. Reverse the downward trend and bring it to a stop. Because of our children and, and their grandchildren and so forth and so on down the line, we as a people need to leave something for them. And in order, and in order to do that, we're gonna to have to be good stewards, each one, each and every one of us. We just need to look. After seven days on the river, the Paddle Georgia group rounds the corner at Hawkinsville, a full 117 miles from where they began. You just gotta keep one stroke at a time. <laughs> All the way to Hawkinsville. I tell you, it was a trip. Uh, this trip, you know, our final takeout point is about 200 yards downstream from a wastewater treatment plant. Nothing could be really more appropriate because and it's a nice reminder as we get out of the river here that you're always downstream from somebody else and you're always upstream from some other community. And so what you do with your wastewater and what you do on your land is going to impact somebody downstream. In Hawkinsville, the group gathers for a fish fry sponsored by the city. But the rewards for this group reach far deeper than a well-earned meal. I would say my number one hope for putting on this trip and all the hard work that goes into it would be that when people leave this trip that they're inspired to go home, get involved in a river organization in their town, in their community, and if they find out that there's not any effort to protect their hometown river, that they get one started and they call us up to help them do that. One, two, three. Hawkinsville, the Paddle Georgia Group's final destination, is a historically significant location along the Okmulgee. Once home to a thriving shipping industry, the steamboats which once disembarked from here have long vanished. But through archaeology, a forgotten history of the Okmulgee is being discovered. Archaeologist Stephen Hammock has been leading volunteer groups along this stretch of river to try to unlock some of its secrets. Well, the Okmulgee River is the reason that many of the towns up and down uh, the river are actually here. In fact, um, the vast majority of the Indian sites that are um, up and down the Okmulgee are directly related to the river itself. When uh, the settlers started coming into this area in the late 1700s, early 1800s, steamboats first came in in about the 1830s on the Okmulgee. Uh, Macon and Hawkinsville uh, were both extremely important in this uh, steamboat trade, this maritime commerce. And uh, Hawkinsville was actually quite a hub in its day, maybe even more so than Macon, for the construction of vessels. Today, Stevens Group is out on the river to survey a site from this era. What we're calling the Hawkinsville Barge. We've been to this site, I guess, three times now, but this is the first time we've taken really in-depth measurements. It's basically some sort of late 19th century to early 20th century barge, possibly an agricultural barge, or it could have something to do with the uh, turpentine naval stores industry. Archaeological societies in Macon go back to the 50s. We've had several incarnations of the, the Archaeology Society. Uh, we refounded the group back in about 2003 and have been exploring the Okmulgee River ever since. At the site, volunteers work both in the water and on land to help document the wreck. Some unknown artifact. Half, half of the, the barge is buried under the bank and the rest is partially submerged in the, in the river. Two meters, 10, 20, 30, 40, three meters. Okay. We do measurements of the overall dimensions of the barge and then make notes of the, we have the iron pins that hold the planking together and made notes of that to try to uh, document what's there right now. It's over time and it will eventually disappear. The best thing about the Okmulgee is hardly any of this has been done, if any. We've been looking at uh, sites all the way from Macon down to Hawkinsville. Everyone on site has a role, whether documenting artifacts underwater or underground. I'm digging for the wall that's on the bank side. It's under the sand here. The, the guys are working on the river side and I'm working here on the land. It's a treasure hunt. You never know what you're gonna find. 
you know, you find something, you got to figure out what you found. And I'm at the back of the boat, trying to help, trying to determine actually the structure of the boat. That's my main purpose. All the sand and the mud that I'm pulling out, I am putting into the screen. We're screening that to make sure that we don't uh, lose any artifacts that may be there, any tiny artifacts that may be there. We want to make sure we capture everything in context. So we're about midway down the vessel where this orange flagging tape is. Uh, basically, we think it had a flat bottom and uh, probably the, uh, the bow and the stern, the front and the rear, uh, basically came up at something like a 45 degree angle. And um, we're not sure, we, we've really got to hit, uh, hit the books and do some research. Tell me again what you have. Got 89 feet, four inches. This fascination with history is, is what it is for me and, and being a part of that discovery that's involved in and digging up what's what's been happening here for you know 13,000 years. Nothing really to fix it to. What I like about it, finding a wreck, a, a wreck like this, and then doing enough research to find out where it's from, well, how it is part of the history of this area. To reel it in just a tad. What's your measurement right there? I like getting dirty. <laughs> We're bringing history back to life. Uh, that's what we're trying to do, uh, to reconnect with events, you know, 100, 500, 12,000 years ago. It's very rewarding. Um, it's, it's also just extremely fun. Within the Okmulgee River Basin lies one of the most unusual ecosystems in the coastal plain, a series of plant communities rooted in the hard rock of a special sandstone. In a region dominated by sandy soils, these rock formations stand out and play host to an array of rare plants, all of which grow in a unique rock called Altamaha grit. This eastern portion of the coastal plain of Georgia is underlain fairly deeply by this Altamaha grit, and, and usually it doesn't outcrop, but in areas where uh, water has flown over this and washed away a lot of the upper sediments, the, the rocks have been exposed. You might look at the Ultima grit plant communities as um, rocky habitats that uh, have a lot of grasses and wildflowers in the summertime, and sometimes 20 to 30 foot ledges of rock with caverns and overhangs and little waterfalls. There, there are several plants that are here that are considered globally rare. A couple of them are endemics or near endemics to these sandstone outcrops. What's really unusual about the area is the composition. You don't normally have wire grass and longleaf pine with Pinsman dissectus growing in the understory, for example. So it's the combinations of plants that here that you won't find anywhere else. There are a number of protected areas in this region. Flat Tub Wildlife Management Area is one that's open to the public, offering a chance for anyone to visit these unique ecosystems. One of the things the state did a couple years ago was to um, circle six areas in the state that they wanted to do a lot of conservation work in, and one of them was the Okmulgee River corridor from the Macon area down to the Altamaha. The Flat Tub WMA is an excellent example of a piece of the puzzle that protects a couple mile stretch of the Okmulgee River. Currently we offer various hunting and fishing opportunities such as big game with deer, turkey. We also uh, provide hiking and walking and, and other things, but we do want to minimize that due to the sensitivity of the area. A more protected area than Flat Tub, Broxton Rocks is largely closed to the public. But the Nature Conservancy, which owns and protects the land, occasionally hosts public tours like this one. Uh, Broxton Rocks Preserve is owned by the Nature Conservancy. It's uh, over a thousand acres of pine woods embedded with rock outcrops. We protected this area for the rock outcrops. You see how the rocks uh, uh, are fairly close on both sides of the stream. We generally do tours in the spring and fall when the weather's nice. 
Uh, we, we take people down to the waterfall, we, we walk them below the rock along the vertical cliff faces, and we, that way we can show them a lot of the plants that grow on the cliffs and the spectacular rock formations. And it's very exciting for people to be walking next to rocks here in the coastal plain of Georgia. Uh, it's, it's very different from anything around here. It, generally the first experience at Broxton Rocks is an ooh-ah kind of experience. So. Uh, I think uh, it really excites people. We, we generally get a really good reaction to the places we take folks. And we might cross the stream and walk up into the well-burned pine lands and teach them about some of the lessons about fire. This, uh, this, this dead part here is an indication of when these trees were tapped for, for their resin. Uh, I can walk through a natural woods like this and my spirit is just renewed. Uh, I love walking around here. There's always something new to see as many times as I come. These rock outcrops here along the Okmulgee River are high on our priority list. So, so it's a, a key project for us in Georgia. Uh, only Georgians can pr protect these Altam High grid outcrops and, uh, and protect all the diversity that's associated with them. Whether paddling down river, exploring its cultural resources, or discovering the unique ecosystems found within, the Okmulgee watershed holds many treasures, but more importantly, its waters deserve our protection and respect because we all truly live downstream. Funding for Georgia Outdoors has been made possible by a grant from Mary Hall Singleton and by the Imlay Foundation.